Now we start talking about spectral graph theory, which is a collection of uh, techniques to solve graph problems by using uh, linear algebra. And let's start by just having a look at what I would call the fundamental theorem of uh, spectral graph theory. This is a result of which we will give the full proof today. So this is saying that if we have a arbitrary undirected graph, for now we'll just look at the regular case, and we define some matrix that is some normalization of the adjacency matrix of the graph. Then we compute its uh, eigenvalues. Then only by looking at the numerical value of the eigenvalues of this matrix, we can figure out some purely combinatorial properties of uh, the graph. We can see if the graph is connected, if it's not connected, how many connected components there are, and also whether the graph or one of its uh, connected components is uh, bipartite or not. So we will come back to the statement of um, this theorem and then we will give a proof and some examples after a very quick review of uh, linear algebra. So let's say that M is a square matrix. We will only deal with uh, real valued matrices, but for now let's uh, look at the definitions in uh, more generality. So let's say we have a matrix with uh, complex entries and uh, we have some vector and some number. Then we give the following definition that if the equation mx equal lambda x is true, then we will say that lambda is an eigenvalue of the matrix and that x is an eigenvector. It's an eigenvector of uh, m with respect to the eigenvalue lambda. Now just by looking at this definition, it might seem like a matrix might have zero eigenvalues because maybe this equation is unsatisfiable or an infinite number of um, eigenvalues because this equation is in some sense uh, overdetermined. But uh, neither of uh, those cases ever holds because we can see that the equation mx equals lambda x is equivalent to writing it as m minus lambda i times x equal to the all zero vector. Now if this happens, and actually here we want uh, x to be non-zero, this matrix m minus lambda i multiplied by a non-zero vector gives all zeros, which means that this is not an invertible matrix and its uh, determinant is zero. And in fact this is still an if and only if. But for a given matrix m, this expression determinant of uh, m minus lambda i as a function of uh, lambda is just a polynomial in lambda of uh, degree n. So working over the complex numbers, this polynomial must have a root. So there must be some solution lambda, so there must be some eigenvalue lambda for this matrix. And in fact there cannot be too many such solutions, because since this is a polynomial of degree n, it can have at most uh, n distinct solution. So every matrix has some possibly complex valued eigenvalue, and it cannot have more than uh, n different uh, eigenvalues. Although that was the fully general case, we will just be interested in uh, the case where M is a real matrix and it's uh, symmetric, meaning that Mij is equal to Mji. So recall that if we have a matrix, its uh, conjugate transpose, which we will denote with a star, is the matrix that in uh, entry ij has the um, value mji conjugate. So it's the matrix that you obtain from m by conjugating every entry and then taking the transpose. But if m is real, taking the conjugate of uh, its entries doesn't change them. And if it's uh, symmetric, then taking the transpose also doesn't change it. So if a matrix is real value then symmetric, its conjugate transpose and the matrix itself are the same. This property that could be true also for some uh, complex valued matrices is called the property of M being uh, Hermitian. So one important consequence of uh, this property is that all the eigenvalues of uh, M, if M is real and symmetric, have to be uh, real valued. So let's see why. Suppose that lambda is an eigenvalue where possibly lambda is complex valued and uh, x is also complex valued. 
So we want to show that for every lambda that satisfies an equation of this form, lambda has to be real. So we look at uh, this expression, the inner product of uh, x with uh, mx. So x conjugate transpose times mx. And we'll uh, write it in uh, two different ways. So mx is lambda x. So this is x conjugate transpose lambda x. And so it's uh, lambda times uh, x conjugate transpose x, which is the norm squared of x. But x star mx, we can also think of it as being uh, m conjugate transpose x, all conjugate transpose times x, just sort of following the definitions. But m was one of those matrices for which its conjugate transpose and the matrix itself is the same. So this is uh, also mx star x. But mx is lambda x. And so this will be lambda conjugate x conjugate transpose x, which is norm of x squared. So this means that this expression and uh, this expression have to be equal. And since x is a non-zero vector, this means that lambda and uh, lambda conjugate have to be equal. And so this means that lambda is a real number. So real symmetric matrices are such that all their eigenvalues are uh, real numbers. So let's see one, uh, one more property of uh, real symmetric matrices. This is also true in general just for uh, Ernitian matrices. So let's say that we have two different uh, eigenvalues. There is an eigenvalue lambda with some eigenvector x and an eigenvalue lambda prime with eigenvector y. So then I want to argue that x and y must be orthogonal. And we will do that by writing x conjugate transpose my in uh, two different ways. So one way would be to say, well, that's like uh, x conjugate transpose times my, which is lambda prime y. And so this is lambda prime x star y which is the inner product of x and y. The other way of uh, writing this will be as mx star y. So this will be lambda x star y, which is lambda conjugate times uh, the inner product of x and y. But we just proved that for uh, real symmetric matrices, all the eigenvalues have to be real. So that's the same as lambda xy. Not in this argument, we have used the property of uh, m being real and symmetric twice. Here to say that lambda has to be real. And here, because we wrote x star times m as mx all star, well, we would have had to write m star x star and then we use the fact that m and m star are the same. Okay, so collecting those equations together, we have that lambda prime in a product xy is equal to lambda in a product xy, or that lambda prime minus lambda times the inner product of x and y is zero. Well, we know that this number is non-zero because we're looking at two different uh, eigenvalues, and so this number has to be zero. So if you have two different uh, eigenvalues, the corresponding eigenvectors have to be orthogonal. So let's uh, discuss one more property of uh, real symmetric matrices. This will all work out towards uh, characterization of the eigenvalues of real symmetric matrices that will help us prove that fundamental theorem of uh, spectral graph theory. So suppose that I have some vectors x1 up to xk, which are all eigenvectors of uh, some matrix M for some eigenvalues. And let's define V to be the orthogonal space to the span of those vectors. So all the y's such that y is orthogonal to x1 and it's also orthogonal to x2 and so on. So we want to prove, I'll write it as a claim, that for every element of uh, V, 
m y is also in v. So if I have some vector that is orthogonal to some eigenvectors, after multiplying m by this vector, I still get a vector that is orthogonal to all those eigenvectors. And to prove this, it's enough to prove that if I have a vector that is orthogonal to some eigenvector x, then m y will still be orthogonal to that eigenvector x. Then we will apply this basic claim to each of the x1, x2 up to xk. So we want to prove that if x is an eigenvector and y is orthogonal to x, then my is also orthogonal to x. Well, let's look at the inner product of uh, x with uh, my. Well, this will be m star x all star times y. But if m is real and symmetric, m star and m are the same. So this will be whatever is the eigenvalue of x times uh, x star. Lambda should be conjugated, but under those assumptions, it's going to be real. So that's lambda times uh, the inner product of uh, x and y, which is going to be 0. But this was the inner product of uh, x and uh, m y. And so we have derived that the that x and uh, m y are orthogonal, provided that x and y were orthogonal. So why is this uh, useful? Well, now we can find uh, a process to reconstruct all the eigenvalues and the uh, eigenvectors of a matrix. The way we will describe it, it's uh, non-constructive, although it can be turned into an algorithm. So let's say we start from a from a real symmetric matrix. Well, like every matrix, it must have some uh, eigenvalue and some uh, eigenvector. And because it's real and symmetric, the eigenvalue will be real. So there's going to be some uh, vector x1 such that mx1 is equal to lambda x1. So x1 could be a vector with complex entries. But if m has real entries and lambda has real entries, and this equation is satisfied by x1, it will also be satisfied by the real part of x1. And so we may assume with a loss of generality that x1 is real. So then let's consider the space of uh, vectors that are uh, orthogonal to x1. So then by what we proved before, m defines a linear map from uh, v1 to v1. But after some change of basis, we can see m as acting from v1 and v1 as a n by one, n minus 1 by n minus 1 metric. So this means that m must have an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. Also, when we think of it just as a map from v1 to v1, so there must be some uh, vector x2 in uh, v1 such that n times x2 is actually uh, some lambda 2 times uh, x2. And so we found a vector orthogonal to x1 that is also an eigenvector. Now we can define a new space containing all vectors that are orthogonal to x1 and to x2 and see that for uh, m this is again an invariant subspace so m is also a map from uh, v2 to v2 so we can find a um, eigenvector in uh, v2 and then we can um, uh, keep going at every step we will uh, reduce the dimensionality of uh, the space and then we will end up with a one-dimensional space and m will have to be a map from this one-dimensional space in itself which means that every vector in that space is also an eigenvector of m.